Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romalek here with the Hurricane Outlook on discussion for August 6, 2021, occurred around 4.07 p.m. Eastern Time. Two tropical systems in the Atlantic Basin to monitor over the next couple of days with a third potentially coming down the pipeline. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, a couple of important things going on. First of all, starting with lower 48 weather, finally, the stalled frontal boundary that has been producing a lot of heavy rainfall for portions of the Florida Peninsula over the last several days has finally lifted northward and has finally given most of the area a break in terms of persistent heavy rainfall. Uh, though we will be returning to more of the summertime pattern with daily afternoon showers and thunderstorms, uh, but widely scattered. So again, flooding will be a concern over the next several days because we have already very saturated soils, but that's a summertime problem for Florida, really, anytime. And in the tropical Atlantic, we are monitoring two tropical disturbances. We have a tropical wave here, and this big tropical wave here, designated 92L, invest area 92L, with a 60% chance of development over the next five days. Yes, development chances have actually decreased a tad. Uh, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. And again, this system, it's very complex and there's a lot of complexities, which we'll get into here in a moment. We also have a, another tropical wave over parts of uh, Western interior Africa. This will be emerging over the next several days into the tropical Atlantic as well. Uh, gaining a little bit of model support, but again, we've been duped too many times this year by tropical waves coming off of Africa and where initially models had really good uh, initialization on this and developed, a, especially like 92L, very aggressive with 92L for the models. And in fact, now development chances are starting to decrease. So we'll have to monitor to see how things occur. Again, these are the two tropical dis disturbances that the Hurricane Center is monitoring. Again, this wave right here with a 20% chance. This will be approaching the northern part of the Antilles here, the parts of the greater Antilles, and then Puerto Rico, uh, over the next couple of days or so. Again, not really watching much out of this, but development chances may be there, uh, but not really too keen on uh, high development chances at the moment. And then we also have another tropical disturbance. This is Invest Area 92L. Again, right now sitting at about 10 degrees north. This will be moving off towards the west-northwest uh, over the next couple of days. And again, development chances will be very interesting to see uh, the, there's a lot of components going into this, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we have two tropical systems that we're watching very closely. This tropical wave here and another tropical wave here. I believe this is Invest Area 92E, and then this will probably be 93E behind it. After these two tropical disturbances move on through, the Eastern Pacific Basin will likely be shutting down at that point, and a lot of this energy will be focused over parts of the Western Hemisphere, uh, such as really over parts of the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, and then obviously moving into Africa and the Eastern Atlantic. So looking here at the 850 millibar vorticity map, this is the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. For context, these reds and whites, that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. What we can actually notice here today, again, this is our first little wave impulse right here. This will be moving off towards the west-northwest over the next couple of days. We have another little bit of energy back behind it here. Uh, this is kind of where some models have tried to develop a little bit of energy with this, uh, but nothing really significant. This is the larger kind of wave axis here. And we also have this big monsoon trough that's down here, part of Invest Area 92E. Very strung out. We can kind of tell that, that there's no real one consolidated area of vorticity. It's just a big, long monsoon trough in through here. And there's little ripples within this trough that are trying to develop and establish itself. And uh, for the most part, the main wave that we're watching right now is 92L which we can look here on the satellite images just as it goes to sunset. We'll actually flip it over here to the true color and zoom it out. We notice that this is a very large wave here. Again, a very large wave envelope where we have a lot of convection that is associated here on the western side of the circulation, probably somewhere of a circulation in through here. And then we have a little bit of shallow convection on the western or the eastern side of this, and then not a lot to the north here, and not a lot to the south. And 
We also notice that there's a lot of dry Saharan air and just general unfavorable conditions around here. And because this is such a large wave, it's going to influence a lot of this dry air to be entrained into it. And again, if there were to be any circulation that ends up developing here, you get a lot of dry air transport from the north and streaming around this and eventually just chokes itself off and through here. And again, we notice that there is some convection around here, but none of it is really persistent around a common area of low pressure. We can kind of tell that uh, this is just one big uh, trough here. Again, we have kind of westerly winds here, easterly winds here with the tropical easterly jet uh, over here. And kind of in between, you have this broad area of relative light flow with maybe a little bit of a, an elongated area of low pressure in through here. Earlier scatterometer passes did indicate that there was a broad but uh, a low pressure, but it was broad and elongated and not very intense. It was a very weak low and very subject to be tugged around. And uh, what we've kind of uh, been looking for over the last several days is we've had kind of this wave envelope uh, roll off of Africa here. And if we do get any established area of low pressure to develop here, we could easily see a system that gets moved uh, and forced northward into the cooler and drier sea surface temperatures in uh, near the Cabo Verde Islands. And this is a distinct possibility at this moment where it kind of gets flung around the monsoon trough into the north. Because again, this is a very broad area of flow and there is a little bit of cyclonic flow here. And it could just get ejected northward and then bend westward with time, similar to the evolution of 92 or 91L, excuse me. And some of the modeling today has been a little bit more consistent with that idea. Uh, again, just very broad in nature. And if we look here on the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. This is this broad wave energy right here in the tropical Atlantic. Again, right now it's sitting at about 9 to 10 degrees north latitude, which is, again, pretty decent. Uh, it's low enough latitude where if something weren't as broad, this would probably already be a storm, uh, in my opinion. But again, we also have this next wave energy here and then another, you know, little wave ripple over there over in parts of Western Interior Africa. So the GFS eventually noticed that within 24 hours, this area of low pressure just gets injected northward around the monsoon trough. Now, it is still sitting, uh, you know, south of the islands, but this is now, you know, 12, 13 north latitude. So it's creeping up there where the sea surface temperatures and very just unfavorable conditions exist. And if we can kind of take a sounding here of the environment, we notice that again, not a lot of shear because we have mostly uniform winds here out of the east. But we notice that we only have about 10 knots of wind here at the surface and then we have just about probably about 35 25 30 knots of wind there at about 200 millibars so just a little bit of speed difference which can be enough to actually prohibit development because it tilts the updraft over which you don't really want tilting updrafts uh not in tropical cyclones and supercells that's good but not in tropical cyclones and we also notice that there's actually not a lot of dry air except right here near the surface. And this little bit of dry air is problematic. There's also a little bit of a capping inversion. And if you're not really familiar with what capping inversion is, it basically uh, limits air parcels from rising freely. And with that, you tend to not be able to have thunderstorms unless of forced by some type of linear front. Uh, usually you would see these in mesoscale convective systems and it's stuff like that where you get this linear type forcing to occur. And there's other dynamics involved in that as well. But a lot of the capping here, which would indicate that you're probably not really going to get uh, a lot of thunderstorm activity. And that's kind of one of the reasons why the GFS eventually kills this wave off. Again, it does develop a mini little tropical cyclone here. And there's some also other embedded vortices in here that try to develop uh, but you can clearly tell there at about hour 120, I mean, you just don't really see much presence of this here. Again, you have a little wave here, a little wave here, nothing really sufficient. And another tropical uh, cyclone here in the East Pacific. And again, 
that's one of the main reasons why, you know, things just aren't developing right now. A lot of upward moving air over this region, kind of shutting things down, which is to be kind of expected. The GFS ensembles, again, we'll look here at the ensemble mean sea level pressure, again, out to about day five and even beforehand. Again, the GFS just isn't really enthused. A little bit of a disturbed area in here, just not really enthused. Another area here. Uh, but other than that, again, the GFS just isn't really sniffing out anything. Uh, we can go back to the 12Z Euro real quickly here in the 850 vorticity. Again, the Euro doesn't really do much. This is something interesting. This is our next wave that will be coming off of Africa over the next couple of days. Again, this is kind of the lead wave here, net part of 92L. This is this next wave here, and eventually the euro goes on to, to amplify that. But we've been duped too many times this year by storms that have really good support, model support for development once it's over Africa, once it comes, you know, uh, you know, over water development chances cease so again something that we're going to have to just kind of keep an eye for but right now development chances of any particular system aren't particularly high so that's good news uh, but the time is ticking and the time will be coming where the window for favorability will begin to increase and we will have to start watching very soon all right well, that being said hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening of course i am michael romali i'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow